Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here. All right, so today I am bringing you guys a new composition. This one is actually a really fun team that I've been having a lot of fun with over the last few days. I tried to get a video up sooner, but you guys are not gonna believe the bad luck I've had making these videos. It was like the first video, someone called me, the second video, my phone ended up dying. It was just like, oh my gosh, so much stuff. So hopefully this is the one that goes down. Anyways, that being said, today this is a video that is showcasing Elena and her new card, Fundamental Forces. Before I get into this, I do want to preface something. Uh, I've read some like Discord and Reddit threads um, about people wondering if they should pull for Elena. Um, and I would say, in my opinion, it's a definite no. Uh, with Gumi and being this kind of game and how expensive this game is, I think that the overall kind of winning perspective is to look forward. So Elena is a unit that is two years old. Although she's still viable, I in no way, shape or form think that she is worth a 42K pity currently, okay? That being said, if you already have Elena at 140, if you have an extra Vizior stash, if you have the 10K Viz to pull for the card and the soul medals to build it, then I think that you can put together a really fun team if you have Addison as well. So yeah, she's a little bit needy, but she is pretty rad. I ended up pulling for this because I really love Elena. Um, I've always really liked her character. And so I saw this and it just looked like fun to me. I didn't get it because I think it's the most meta thing to come out so far. Although I do think there is a chance that they put this out as kind of like a soft counter to Thunderbride Aliyah that is coming out soon. She's going to be very powerful and I've heard that she has some accuracy issues. So maybe this might be the way to kind of hold up against her. We'll have to see. I haven't really looked at her kit yet, so I don't know. That being said, Here's the Fundamental Forces card at level 99. That's 278 HP, 160 magic, 41 dex, and 18 luck. That's 24 evasion, 16 crit evasion, and 35 slash attack up, which is pretty sweet. 8% agility up in the bestowed, which is very, very good. And then light attack up 20 in the limited bestowed to Elena and Lucio. So it is a very good card. And, you know, I was wondering what my evasion stat was going to be when I got this. And... When I have everything equipped, she's sitting at 163 evasion, which is pretty damn phenomenal. She's only at reincarnation 18, so if she was fully reincarnated or close to it, she'd probably be in the mid to upper 170s, uh, which I imagine is where Yuffie is sitting at max reincarnation, which is pretty damn awesome. I think my highest before was like 154 evasion, so to get 9 above that is pretty sweet. So yeah, I'm overall pretty psyched on this team. And something else that's interesting about this team is that... Um, Normally when I was building an evasion team, you would have to make everything about the team suited to evasion. And as you guys can see, I do not have Locke here. I do like Locke a lot. I think his 140 is decent, but I just think that he can't really carry in the DPS department in comparison to newer units. So it's going to take him so long to actually kill someone that, you know, I just don't really think it's worth it. But with this composition, as you guys can see, I kind of get the best of all worlds for all the characters while still having Elena be a true evasion character sitting at 160 evasion plus and this team is actually really 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 fun um I've been having a lot more fun in arena um in guild war I am running this team currently on attack uh but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it planes 4 which is the current guild war map just fucking sucks uh <laughs> It's like you put your units out there and they're running in circles and running back and left and back and forth and there's so many range heights and it's like for rangers and archers, sick, I bet it's awesome. But like, <laughs> I have not been enjoying it that much. Anyways, that being said, let's get into the team build for the day. This is a evasion hybrid composition starting with Addison Ray. She is level 140, reincarnated 25 times. She has 10.3k HP, 116 agility, 400 dexterity, 400 luck, 1760 magic, 21 defense, 19 spirit. She has 20 single target resistance, along with 37 slash, 22 missile, 50 magic, then neutral to strike and negative 3% to pierce resistance, along with 5% green all across the board on elemental, except for dark, which is negative 5. So overall, not bad at all. I'm running her the Sweetheart Secret Pouch with HP and agility set bonuses, along with 12 fully maxed passives. Next, going into Elena, I have her at level 140, reincarnated 18 times. She has almost 7.4k HP, 118 agility, 430 dexterity, 480 luck. 
She's got around 1550 magic, 7 defense, 9 spirit, 20 single target uh, resistance, and 0 area attack resistance. Her back end stats are neutral to slash, 17 pierce, 5 strike, 17 missile, and 30% magic resistance, along with all neutral resistances to the elemental down below. Um, going into her TMR, I am running her evasion slash agility stones, of course, with 12 fully maxed passives. I do want to make a small note here. Um, throughout my time of playing War of the Visions, I've heard a lot of people say that running Luck as the set bonus as opposed to Evasion as the set bonus um, works better for Evasion units. I've made somewhere between two or 300 different team builds now on YouTube, and in my observation and experience, Evasion does work better, at least for me, rather than Luck, and so I always go with Evasion slash Agility, but to each their own, that's just my opinion. Um, and like I said, she is sitting at 163 evasion, which is pretty damn sweet. Uh, I am running her Azure successor as her main job as a sub job. Um, and I've never really done this before, but it is because she has this extra AoE attack. Um, for Elena, the only AoE attack she has other than this is her limit break. And most of the time I run her, you know, Rune Knight or Kotodama sub for the guaranteed hit. But with this and with the haste buff from Sorrow's TMR, she can oftentimes like lap the the enemy team and then chain her own limit break with this AoE, which which actually makes for some pretty damn good damage. So I'm actually pretty interested to be playing her and even more so in a different way than I've played her before, which is pretty damn fun, not gonna lie. This is her new sword at plus one, which is really good. <laughs> so as you guys can see here, I'm not gonna go over the stats, but you can just look at them, you know. Wish it had some kind of like spirit, spirit penetration on it or something, but you know, it is what it is. But a pretty sweet sword that you can get from her Master Ability 2 quest. Last but not least, here we have Barks. He's been reincarnated also 18 times. He's got around 10.2k HP, 107 agility, 400 dexterity, 430 luck, coast to 1850 attack, 25 defense, 7 spirit, 20 single target resistance, 32 AoE resistance. And then in the back end, looking the best out of all three of them, 25 slash, 15 strike, 10 missile, 30 magic, and then negative five to pierce resistance, along with all green and the element resistances across the board as well. So also looking pretty good. Last but not least, I'm running the Bradley TMR on him with HP and agility stones, and of course with 12 fully maxed passives. All right, so that is the team, as you guys can see. Uh, it's a pretty fun one, and we're gonna get into some battles now. So. There are, you know, so like, uh, I mean, there's not that many different, there's like mostly dark water and ice up here in the arena. Um, so we're not going to have like a full selection of elements to choose from, but I mean, yeah, look, let's see here. Yeah, we got ice. We have one lightning team, but it's with a 120 Skahal. So I'm not really too keen on that. Let's go up to the top and let's just go down from here. Let's see what this is. Okay. So this looks fun. This is like a fire slash barts composition, which looks pretty interesting. I'm not going to be hunting evasion teams since we have no way to really counter them, but as long as they have maxed uh, trust stone passives, then I am good. So I'm going to go for this for my first fight of the day, and we will see how it goes. It's a pretty fun team. We're actually going to, we're definitely going to fight a dark team or two, uh, but it can go either way against fighting dark. Um, I've, I've done fights where I completely perfect them, and then I've done fights where I basically get wrecked. It really just depends on Sephiroth's placement, Sephiroth's movement, as opposed to my unit's movement. And um, yeah, really it just relies on Sephiroth. And if we can take him out quickly, then basically goes down. Okay, so Elena moved over to the side. She casts out Amaris. It's the only way to get Addison to cast the Courage buff on her on this map. But now Addison has that buff on herself. Uh, or Addison put uh, her Courage buff on Elena. This map didn't work quite as well as, or I mean, this composition right here against this team didn't work quite as well as some others, I think because of Mont's placement. Uh, normally Addison will Courage herself and Elena, and then Bartz will Courage himself right off the bat. Um, so this time Addison actually doesn't have Courage because she cast it on Bartz. All right, so we are gonna get that reflex there. There is Addison using, uh, the TMR ability. And here comes Elena laying down the Iridescent Blade, I believe, on Kefka. Alright, he's gonna get the CT up and go for the big hit right here. 
our Bartz is going to put him down into the ground. All right, Monte is going to get the disable on Bartz. We're almost going to take him down. Here comes Elena. I freaking love that she's slash magic because a lot of units are super physically uh, defensive. But she tends to just eat through units. As you can see, her and Addison are like the main damage dealers. Like if Addison gets even like two or even three turns off, like it's normally basically over. She hits really dang hard. All right, so we are going to go down despite the fact that we did get disabled. I mean, we are going to take them down despite that fact. So there's the first fight of the day. Elena was not even touched. Um, and honestly, it's really, really, really fun. I've been waiting a while to be able to run like a full evasion character without having to make everything about my team evasion. Um, there is something to be said for that kind of team where you're running luck in the main card, luck in the sub card, but I am running luck in the sub card, evasion in the main card, and evasion in the sub card, and still getting more out of the team than, you know, I've kind of bargained for. So let's go through here. What about this dude? Okay, so this looks like a pretty interesting team. Mons TMR on Sephiroth. I mean, not my first choice, but let's see how this is. All right, ice attack up for not the best. This dude just popped up. This is a Sephiroth with an Alexandrite ring, so I'm going to uh, avoid that. You don't want to be fighting high accuracy characters uh, with an evasion character. Let's see this team right here. Okay, so this looks interesting right here. This is a kind of like a water ice composition, um, which normally I prefer mono element teams, but I feel like this team will work really well together. So let's go for this. I know that Astrius has guaranteed hit. I am not sure if Ferris has guaranteed hit. If one of you guys knows, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to know because Ferris has actually hit Elena quite a few times. So I'm guessing she does or has like some type of high accuracy move um, that's allowing her to hit. So we'll just have to see how this battle goes. This will be the second battle of the day. All right, so this is what normally happens. Elena runs to the left, Addison casts a Courage on her, Bartz casts his own Courage, and then on the next turn, Addison will Courage herself, which is going to give all three characters Courage right off the bat, which is pretty awesome. All right, Elena's going to get the Haste and the Hate down, and Addison is going to get her Courage there, just like I said. All right, we do have Haste on Astrius over here. All right, we are going to get the AoE resistance and the physical shield on Bartz, and Elena is going to take first blood. All right, so she's going to almost take out Astrius. Velus is going to go for the heal. We'll see what he does right here. Ooh, he runs away. Ooh, nice hit from Addison. Elena following up, and Astrius is going to go down. Bartz is going to haste, so now we have double hasted characters. All right, here comes Ferris. We are going to get that reflex. See, there you go. So she can hit her. She must have something that's allowing her to hit. Ooh, nice dodge from Elena right there. Here comes, wow, Ferris looking very tanky. Oh my gosh. She's the, this is the tankiest Ferris I've ever seen. She must be super built against magic resistance because Bart's just ate through her. Although we had a pretty big chain right there at the end, so... Wow, that was, that was pretty interesting. That's the least I've ever hit Ferris for in any fight I've done so far. All right, let's go from there. So that is 2-0, as you guys saw right there. And we're just going to keep on going. Beans, cool beans. All right, not quite what I am looking for. All right, so here's an ice team. This looks pretty strong. Ice is pretty tough right now. I believe they are currently boosted on this map. All right, so it looks like we do have max trust stones, so let's go for it. Um, the nice thing about this team is that, you know, this, uh, I don't even know what to call him, celebrated Jaden, wedding Jaden, husband, husbando Jaden, um, you know, he has this uh, kind of ability where he can remove the hate from the tank. So obviously in our team composition right now, we have no tank, so we take away that entire thing from him. Although it's kind of been like 50-50 with fighting ice teams. I did fight a ice team earlier, a very strong ice team with a max reincarnation Reagan. He was like 14k HP plus. And we ended up beating that team and then I lost to a different ice team. So we'll see how this one goes right here. Here we have Howlet instead of Reagan. Honestly, like 
Velas's support is just like brutal. Wow, major hit from Howlett right there. Velas coming in, Jaden stepping back. All right, we are going to get the physical shield. Everything is hasted on the other side. Here comes Elena going after Howlett. All right, and Addison's going to follow up. Howlett's going to go down. Velas is running over. It looks like Jaden's getting another buff. And Velas is going to take down Addison. All right, so now we just got to rely on these two, although Jaden does have a 10,000 HP barrier against physical. And we have a very strong supportive healer in the back supporting him. So we'll just have to see how this goes. All right, there goes Bart's following up. Velas is going to go down. Jaden is immobilized as per Elena's uh, AoE attack in her main job as her sub job, which is pretty sweet. And we're just going to see. Okay, Bart's is on Courage. We're going to get... That was weird. She didn't attack. Neither of them attacked. They're stuck because of all the corpses. Wow, what a freaking scam right there all right why didn't you do that last time that's some bullshit all right so she's gonna raise her evasion he's gonna heal himself this is an interesting end to this battle all right so we are gonna end up winning that 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 was interesting um but that's cool all right so we're 3-0 right now as you guys can see this is a really fun team i've really been enjoying it a lot and if you have all of these different elements um, the VCs, the characters, etc. You can build something like this, and you know it's not like this is anywhere near max reincarnation or anything. So it is definitely doable to put together. All right, let's see here. All right, so here we have a dark team. Um, Sephiroth doesn't have the Heaven's Cloud, it's Katana, but he does have max trust zones. So let's go for this. This will be our dark team fight. I think we're 3-0 right now. Like I said, dark can go either way, so we're just going to have to give it our best. Um, yeah, it's really Sephiroth. He's a pain in the ass. His limit break is, I'd say, like the best limit break in the game, honestly. Massive AoE with big damage and courage re-raise removal. It's just it's too good. All right, so here we have Elena going off to the side. We're going to get our perfect start, as per usual. All right, we have Sephiroth at 12.2k HP, Wrath at 14.5. So Wrath is not really reincarnated, and Sephiroth has been reincarnated probably 50 times, I would guess. Something like that. All right, here comes Addison. Sephiroth is going to move forward. He's going to immediately take out Addison right off the bat. He's such a bastard. All right, so we're going to have to pull something off, because this is now a... a a legit 2v3. All right, there goes Elena. Sephiroth, 33 AP. He is going to be, he is going to buff. Here comes Raph. She's going to go for the heal. Uh, Fina's coming in. Uh, Elena is going to get the good dodge. All right, Bartz is going to go after Sephiroth. He is going to go down. Raph is going to get the re-raise. All right, so Sephiroth is down. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, Elena is going to lap them, and Raph is going to go down. Fina is going to go for the shot on Bartz, but he is going to have courage. All right. She is going to get the CT up, but still Elena is faster. I'm guessing she's going to get the re-raise right here. She's going to get one more shot. Definitely going to go for Bartz. All right. And Elena still sitting healthily at 48 AP, and it is over. That is 4-0, taking out a dark team right there. So as you can see, light evasion can still work against dark despite its current uh place in the meta which is pretty sweet and all right so we got one fight left for the day um let's find something cool we fought that guy we fought that guy we fought that guy we fought that guy um we fought a water team maybe we'll fight new beater hmm it's like basically the same team what's this guy That's not the Max Reincarnation Reagan that I found earlier. Alright, so we have... Which one has the higher attack stat? 4.7. 4.9. Alright, so let's just make sure that the trust stones are good. Ooh, also with 11.3k HP right here. So definitely some reincarnations on her. Let's look at Astrius. He looks base, so not reincarnated. 
and Peren, definitely some reincarnations on her. All right, so let's go for Alice. This will be our last fight of the day. If we can win this, we'll have gone 5-0. and um, I think I'm like around rank 180 right now, so not in the top 100. But to be honest, I feel like if you really want to compete, I mean, in the top 10, uh, you're going to need like teams with pretty highly leveled reincarnated characters. Um, I think that there's definitely ways to beat them outside of that, but at the same time, like, it just takes so long to fight your way up there. Certain certain times I will, when I'm like super hyped on stuff, but I think that being in the top 200 is good enough. Alright, so here we go, getting the good setup. This is going to be interesting right here. Alright, so here comes Bartz, we got our full set. Ferris, almost 13k HP, that's pretty good, and Peren, about 13k HP, so we got some, and Astrius, 11k, so pretty damn strong right now. Alright, here comes Addison. Astrius did not get off his courage, Elena is going to double back and go for the Stellamaris buff, and Bartz is going to use his haste right here. Ooh, I'm guessing that Addison is about to go down, luckily she, ooh, courage removal! Okay, so these are the tough ones. I wasn't too worried about Asterisk, but we're just going to have to see how this goes. Peren is going to be definitely more tanky against Slash, but it does not matter. Bartz is going to take her down. Elena is going to pop the evasion buff. I'm pretty sure Ferris has some type of guaranteed hit or high accuracy move, like we said earlier. Um, Bartz is going to double up right there, and Ferris is going to go down. So like I said, this team is just very well-rounded. You have a very high evasion unit. You have a very strong, supportive physical attacker in Bartz. Um, you get three Courages, and you have Addison on top of that, who's a very good support with very good buffs, with very good magical damage. I just feel like this team is a very, very, very good all arounding fully supporting in itself, uh, like, composition. So I really wanted to share this video with you guys, even though it took me, you know, I had some bad luck in trying to record videos before, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Before I go, I do want to talk a little bit about the upcoming Squall Final Fantasy VIII collaboration. Um, I've looked at Squall's kit, I'm not going to lie, I am a little disappointed in how it's coming out. Um, my overall thoughts are that Squall is meant to counter the Summer Glaciella um, slash bridal alaya meta that is upcoming and he does do a good job at that he is going to be able to counter that meta um however with a new collaboration like protagonist hero launch of a unit i want a character that's not necessarily countering a meta but creating a meta and squall is definitely not that um i did watch orange jay's video you know he's relatively positive on these kind of things uh but at the same time, I feel like when I watch his videos, I feel like I never really get his like true opinion on things just because I know that he wants to keep it sweet with Gumi. And at the same time, he wants to keep it sweet with characters. So he's always like hugging this like fine medium in the middle, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes I just want to hear people say it is what it is, right? And what it is, is that Squall is a 100 cost character that doesn't feel like a brand new 100 cost character, right? You know, so like his honeycomb barrier is cool for those of you that don't know. Um, he takes less damage the farther you are. So if you're seven panels away, he's going to take 60% damage. If you're, you know, four panels away, he's going to take 90% damage. And it goes up 10% per panel that you move closer or further away from him. Um, I feel like it would have been cooler if it worked in the opposite way, where like as you got closer to Squall, the barrier got better. And so, you know, it would force you to use rangers, gunners, uh, to take him down from a distance. Because if you were fighting him up close and personal, he would just be this freaking beast. I also think that he could have done with uh, better slash attack resist penetrations and defense penetrations. Um, he's just not as strong. If they would have given him something like Bradley level, or at least close, um, it would have felt better i'm a little bummed squall is one of my favorite uh final fantasy protagonist heroes um of all time honestly and so just to see you know and a to have cloud lightning and squall all in lightning element i feel like it's just kind of like a bit of a bummer um 
but it is what it is. I mean, there's, there's not much we can do about it at this point, but I, I do not think that Squall's kit is worthy of a 100 cost. That's unfortunate because that's what they're selling him as. But on a positive note, Renoa is a free 90 cost Earth unit, and she is looking to be fantastic. The Ultima rating for Squall right now is currently a 9.7. So knowing that our, there are units on launch that get 9.9 .9 ratings, you know, 9.7 is pretty low, especially for Renoa being free, being 90 cost. Hers is 9.8. So that is just a little bit unsettling for me. I'm guessing that when Squall launches, they're going to give him a um, a global exclusive buff on his VC. It better be defense penetration, like plus 40 or 20, at least 20, something like that to help him with his damage, uh, especially because you basically have to build him full crit build to utilize like the most of his kit. So, you know, I'm a little bit bummed on that. I, I even think that even though I love Squall as much as I do, I think I'm actually gonna skip him just because I'm skipping Bridal Alaya, and I've watched a lot of Japanese videos on PvP regarding Squall, and I have noticed that in every single video, Alaya is hard carrying. So, basically, if you don't have her, I feel like Squall is just going to be so lackluster, and I have no intention of pulling for Bridal Alaya. She, she looks very strong, very meta, but nah, I'm good. I'm good on the wedding dress character. So... I'm going to wait for the units that were kind of shown in the live stream that like the 12 units that were all silhouetted and they were dark so you couldn't actually see what they looked like but you could see their outlines like those units I feel like are going to be pretty strong. I feel like they're going to open up right after the world to worldwide so I'm going to be kind of saving for that. I'm also skipping Summer Glaciella despite how strong she is. I know she's going to be strong but I'm just going to be focused on building teams that counter these metas so you guys can look forward to a video from me here and there. Um, I'm going to be trying to put up a video like once a week. So let me know which day of the week you guys think would be the best day for me to put out a new team build video. Um, and then we'll go from there. That being said, I just want to thank everyone who has supported me over the years making these uh, World Visions videos. I really appreciate you guys. And that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.